Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so excited. God is so good. Hallelujah. God changed my story. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Bless God. Amen. We are so happy for the goodness of the Lord today. I pray that you are having a blessed day. I pray that God is blessing you. I pray that God has changed your story. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, bless his wonderful name. We are going to now just pray. Hallelujah. Let's go into prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God in heaven, we bless your holy name. We thank you for life, health, and strength. We worship you because of who you are, the God of gods, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. We thank you for your son, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, and for the Holy Spirit, our comforter, leader, and guide in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that you're bearing fruit today. Amen. We talked about it last week. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, gentleness, and faithfulness. I pray that we are bearing fruit today. We're, that You can find that in Galatians 5.22. Amen. So I, I, I thank God for you. We're waiting for some more people to get in. But I, I should say we're not waiting. We're going to go ahead and get started because we're excited. We're excited. Amen. We're excited about what God is doing today because God has truly changed my story via the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are doing a, a book review. The Person and Work of the Holy Spirit. And it is by R.A. Torrey. R.A. Torrey. And um, it is outstanding. We're in chapter 5. For the ones of you that are following along with us, we're in chapter 5. And we're going to pick it up. Well, I won't give you the page number because it depends on what kind of book you have. It could be different. Amen? But we're picking it up at point number two where it says the Spirit of God. So we're talking about the different names now of the Holy Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit is frequently spoken of in the Bible as the Spirit of God. For example, we read... In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. In this name, we have the same essential thought as in the former name. But with this addition, that his divine origin, uh, nature, and power are emphasized. Hallelujah. He is not merely the wind. Hallelujah. As seen above, the wind of God. Now let's move to point number three. And if someone um, don't mind, would you give me a thumbs up or something if you can hear me clearly? Amen. I need to do a sound check out there. God bless you all. Uh, point number three, the Spirit of Jehovah. This name is used of the Holy Spirit in Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. It reads, And the Spirit of Jehovah, thank you, God bless you, and the Spirit of Jehovah shall rest upon him. The thought of the, of, of the name is, of course, essentially the same as the preceding with the exception that God is here, God is here thought of as the covenant. And covenant means agreement, amen, as the covenant God of Israel. Hallelujah. He is thus spoken of in the connection in which the name is found. And of course, the Bible following that unerring accuracy that is always 
uh, uh, that, that it always exhibit in its use of the different names of God. And this connection speaks of the spirit as the spirit of Jehovah and not merely as the spirit of God. How many people know that God's name is Jehovah? Now, we don't want to get that mixed up with something else. We know there's other things. Amen? But his real name, God's name, he is Jehovah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, bless God. Amen? So we're going to go to uh, point number four. It says the Spirit of the Lord Jehovah. The Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of the Lord Jehovah in Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3. I pray you're marking these scriptures. I've gotten some really, really, oh my God, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your subscriptions. Do you know that I look today and we're up to 100 and, I don't know, 18 or something. We're almost to 120 subscribers. Only God can do that. <laughs> Amen. And I get, get comments and reports from people. They say, we are enjoying it. We're learning. We're following along with you. Thank you so much. I tell you, I'm getting blessed. I'm getting blessed in this teaching. Amen. So let's, let's go back now to where we were. Uh, Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. It says, The Spirit of the Lord Jehovah is upon me, because Jehovah hath anointed me, to preach good tidings to the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and etc. That's what that was Jesus speaking, but it's also on us. The Holy Spirit is here spoken of not merely as the Spirit of Jehovah, but the Spirit of the Lord. Jehovah, because of the relationship in which God himself is spoken of in this connection. As not merely Jehovah, the covenant agreement God of Israel, but as Jehovah, Israel's Lord, as well as their covenant keeping God. Anybody ever heard that before? He's a covenant keeping God. He's not like man. He doesn't lie. Oh my God, he keeps his agreement. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. This name of the Spirit is even more expressive than the name, quote, the Spirit of God. Now we're at point number five, the Spirit of the living God. Our God is alive and well. And it's not just on Easter celebration. He is alive every single day, 24-7. And guess what? He lives in you and he lives in me. Hallelujah. Okay, the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of the Living God. And that scripture is in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Okay? Quote, for as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle, the writing of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, mm, but with the spirit of the living God, not in uh, tables of stone, we remember the Ten Commandments on the stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. What is the significance of this name? It is made clear by the context. The Apostle Paul is drawing a contrast between the Word of God written in ink on paper and the Word of God written on the tables that are hearts of flesh. By the Holy Spirit, who in this connection is called the Spirit of the Living God. That's quote unquote. Because he makes God a living reality. Please get this. Oh, there's some good in this. 
I, you know, I read ahead and I just get so excited. I want to jump ahead, but I, I'm going to thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to stay there because this is good food. He makes God, meaning the Holy Spirit, makes God a living reality in our personal experience instead of a mere intellectual concept. Can you, <laughs> mm. I know you want to say something out there. Type it in. Glory be to God. Just type it in because this is good. I, I want your comments. Type it in. There are many who believe in God and who are perfectly orthodox or genuine in their concept of God. But after all, God is to them only an intellectual theological proposition. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to make God something vastly more than a theological notion, no matter how orthodox. He is the spirit of the living God, and it is his work to make God a living God to us, a being whom we know with whom we have personal acquaintance, a being more real to us than the most intimate human friend we have. Have you a real God? Well, you may have. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of the living God. He is able and ready to give to you a living God to make God real in your personal experience. We used to sing a song in the, in the church in the old days, real, real, Jesus is real to me. Anybody remember that? Oh, yes, he gives me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Anybody remember that old song? <laughs> Hallelujah. And, 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 and I know the folks of old, even though they said that they weren't very illiterate and didn't have all the computers and all the gadgets we have right now. But they had the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And they sang, Jesus is real to me. So many people doubt him. But I can't live without him. Why? Because he's so real to me. When you have an experience with the Holy Ghost, when you have an experience with the Holy Ghost, ah, nobody, but I mean nobody, can make you doubt him. Oh, I love that old song. Hello, let's move on. I'm getting excited. God bless you, Jesus. This is good stuff. So it says here, the Holy Spirit's job is to make God real in your personal experience. There are many who have a God who once lived and acted and spoke. A God who lived and acted at the creation of the universe, uh, who perhaps lived and acted in the days of Moses and Elijah and Jesus Christ and the apostles, but who no longer lives and acts. That's not our God. Hallelujah. If he exists at all, he has withdrawn himself from any active part in nature or the history of man. He created nature and gave it its laws and powers and now leaves it to run itself? Seriously? He created man and endowed him with his various faculties, but has now left him to work out his own destiny? They may go farther than this. They may believe in a God who spoke to Abraham and to Moses and to David and to Isaiah and to Jesus and to the apostles and who speaks no longer. We may read in the Bible that he spoke to these various men, but we cannot expect him to speak to us. In contrast with these, 
It is the work of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, to give us to, to give us to know God, who lives and acts and speaks today. A God who is ready to come as near to us as he came to Abraham, to Moses, or to Isaac, or to the apostles, or to Jesus himself. Not that he has any new revelations to make, for, for, for he guided the apostles into all truth. Let's look at John uh, 16 and 13. But though there has been a complete revelation of God's truth made in the Bible, still God lives today and will speak to us as directly as he spoke to his chosen ones of old. I told you before in my testimony, if you go back and you and you and you listen to some of my the, the previous ones, we are in chapter five now, so uh, our videos out there, you will say, I told you and I won't go through it again, but when you hear the voice of God, he spoke to me audibly and he said to me to check on my mother and as, as I as I obeyed. I walked into the room and my mom was having a heart attack. Oh, glory be to God. But she was, hey, he said to me again in my spirit, no, it's not our time. And God blessed her to live another five years before she left this earth. People that know me know my story. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, and then as I'm walking along the street and this guy meets me and he doesn't pass by me, but he sneak up behind me somehow. God says to me, turn around. I was a little stubborn. He said it to me twice in my ear, turn around. And as I turned around, I was looking him there in the face. He couldn't do anything but stare at me. I was so close to him that I could feel his breath when he sighed. Remember? He said, Whew. And then all he could do was walk away. Oh, hallelujah. There's so many times I could tell you about the goodness of God. God is real. I can't convince you of that. The Holy Spirit does that. All I can do is testify. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Still, God lives today and will speak to us as directly as he spoke to his chosen ones of old. Happy is the man who knows the Holy Spirit as the spirit of the living God and who consequently has a real God, a God who lives today, a God upon whom he can depend today to undertake for him, a God with whom he enjoys intimate personal fellowship, a God to whom he may raise his voice in prayer and who speaks back to him. God speaks back to us. You know, my bishop often says, you know, and, and we know this, God is always speaking. He's always speaking. But are we listening? Jesus said, my sheep would know my voice. They would know and hear his voice. We recognize his voice. When you get to know your God, like I, I, I get to know my God, I recognize his voice. Can you remember when your mother used to call you? You could be on the playground. You could be amidst all of the children. You can have a whole bunch of brothers. And sisters. You can have a whole bunch of noise. But when mom called you, you recognize that voice. And sometimes your friends would recognize that voice. And you probably remember your mom calling you. <laughs> you recognize that voice because you had an intimate relationship with that voice, with that individual, your mom. When you get an intimate relationship with the Lord, the Holy Spirit makes him real to us. He reveals him. Jesus said that, it's inevitable that I go away. I'm backtracking now. It's inevitable that I go away. But I will not leave you comfortless. I got to go. If I don't go, the comforter will not come. So I got to go. But I will pray to the Father, and he will send you a comforter. And, 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 and he will lead you and guide you. But not only will he be with you, but he will be in you. Hey, hallelujah. We're going through a terrible, terrible, terrible time right now. Nothing new under the sun. Our family, grandparents, great-grandparents, our ancestors went through this and more with the prejudice, 
1918 was another pandemic. There's on and on and on. But they made it through. Yes, lives were lost. But I want you to always remember one thing the Lord touched my heart with. I just saw on, on the book, um, on Facebook or somewhere, someone was posting, a new baby was born. Do you know lives are leaving, but babies are being born? Lives are leaving, but babies are still being born every day. As you and I are talking right now, there's a new birth coming in the world. Someone is leaving out, but a new birth is coming in. Amen? Our God is real. Yes. We have, he, he's looking now for us in this time. This is our time. I, I mentioned before we go to the, I think we can do one more topic before I went to the next one. I, I mentioned about the prophets of old, remember? That was their time. How many people know right now this is our time? We have to be the light right now. We are the light right now. When you hear my theme song where it says no longer bound, God gave me that song. And when I wrote that song, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the words in there are saying, no longer bound by bitterness and no longer bound by hatred and jealousy and all of these things. No longer bound by sin and shame. No longer bound by all these, these strongholds that the enemy has on us. The Bible says, whom the Son set free, he's free indeed. And as we are free in him, and as we are allowing the Holy Spirit to, to live and move and speak and, and, and shine through us, we become that light that he said that we would be, that light that is set on a hill, amen? That light that's in a dark place. The world is dark, but the church right now, us, the temple of God, the called out one, the ecclesias, we are the light. So you are light in your home if you're the only one that's saved. You are light on your job if you're the only one that's knowing Jesus there and professing his name. You are light wherever you go. You are light in your community. You are light in your apartment complex. You are light. So when others are doing things, the Holy Spirit will prompt you. Don't do that. Don't say that. Do this or do that. Go here or go there. Hallelujah, I wish I had a witness out there. I'm telling you, God is real, people. He is not somebody that is just set away somewhere. Listen, this hurt my heart. I was visiting a church. Our, you know, churches visit churches, so our church was visiting a church. I'll never tell you the name of the church. It's not necessary. But as we were waiting for service to start, I was sitting in one of the pews and there were some men in the Lord behind me. And I overheard their conversation. And uh, they were saying that, well, you know, there's a lot of people that say God heals and uh, he, you know, but you know, uh, and all that stuff is not going on today. It hurt my heart. I, I, I wanted to interrupt. But I had to restrain myself. It wasn't my conversation. So I just prayed. I said, Lord, enlighten. Let them know that God is still real today. I'm a witness. He healed my body. I was diagnosed with cancer years ago. God healed my body. I've seen God deliver and heal. My husband was opened up in an open heart surgery three times in one night. The doctor kept coming back and saying, I'm sorry, we can't find the bleeder. But there was a group of prayer warriors in that little conference room. And tears was down our eyes, but we were praying. And each time I would say to him, doctor, go back. He came back again. He said, I, I, I just, we can't find it. And then he looked at us 
and he looked at me and he says, you know, I'm a believer like you. He says, I believe that your husband is fighting. And he said, you keep praying. I'm going back. He says, he says, he says, you know, I got to let you know. I, I'm going to have to leave his chest open and I'm going to have to seduce him into a coma because I don't want him to move about until we can reduce the swelling and close him up again. He said, but I'm going back. And he went back and he found that bleeder. And he was able to come back and long story short, yes, my husband lived for uh, quite a while after that. God is real. God is alive. God is a healer. Yes, sister, God is a deliverer. Don't you dare get stressed out with what is going on right now. It's all around us. There are folks, folk right now that are afraid to leave out of their house. <sighs> they don't know what to do. They're worried. The Lord doesn't want us to worry. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. He wants us to pray. Talk to the Holy Spirit. Go in the bathroom if you have to and you know, you know in the scripture what they say the lady went in her closet? It's your little private place. Sometimes you have to get away from your surroundings. My, my, you know where my closet is? Even though I, I, even I live in an apartment sometimes. Mama. You know, I love to be in my car. And when I'm driving to work, my 15 minutes to work early in the morning, and when I'm coming home, I love to just worship. I pray in the spirit unto the Lord. I just bless his name. It's like 4.30 in the morning. There's nobody out there hardly but the ones that was that are frontliners and we got to be to work early. But I'm blessing God for his goodness. And I just pour out my heart to him. Talk to him like you would your friend, like you would your neighbor, because he is your friend. He, he is, he's right there with you. He, he Listen, Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So if we are what Paul said, know ye not that your bodies are the temple of God. So if our bodies are the temple of God and he lives in us in the temple, we're never without him. He's always with us. Amen. I haven't been able to drive home in years. I'd love to do it again. We'll wait till time is right. But I can remember when I drove and folks would say to me, home is Florida, by the way, in, in, in Central Florida, folks would say to me, did you drive by yourself? And I didn't know how to truly answer them because I said, well, uh, yeah, but no, uh, God is with me, the Holy Spirit. Well, I know the Holy Spirit. I know God is with you. But they just didn't know God was with me. <laughs> God was with me so much so. And we're going to close with this testimony. We'll pick this up next time where it says the spirit of Christ still in chapter 5. God was with me so much so. Until a knife. And I don't know how it happened. Nobody knows. There was a closed it's, the name of it is called cobalt, or some type of switchblade knife, totally closed, sealed together, had embedded itself in my tire. I drove, oh my God, over 3,000 miles because I went to my home, stopped off in South Georgia, and went to Central Florida, and then I drove over to South Florida to a event, family event. I drove back across from South Florida to Central Florida, back to South Georgia, back to Rochester. Never once knowing this thing was in my tire. 
Never heard it, never had any inkling. Came back home, rested for a day, went to work. And as I was leaving work, after working 12 hours, and it was in the summer, so it wasn't dark. And as I just barely began to leave my job, I felt a lumping sound. Looked in my mirror and my tire had gone flat. And I had basically a new tires and I thought, what is going on? So I pulled over, called AAA, you know the story. The guy came and he changed out my tire and he says, Oh, it looks like a puncture. He says, I think we can just go down and fix it. It's okay. Great. Figured I ran over something. We couldn't see what it was. So we get to the tire place just before it closes. And the guy looks at it and he says, oh, it looks like a puncture. I think we can just fix it. So I'm in the waiting room and he goes and he takes the, the tire and start to look at it. And he says, he called me back out there. He says, ma'am? And I said, yes. And the picture is on Facebook. I don't have it in front of me now. But he held out his hand. And in the palm of his hand was this knife, completely sealed. He said, we took this out of your tire. I said, in the name of Jesus. I said, sir, forgive me, but I got to give God the glory. You took that out of my tire? He said, this was in your tire. Somehow it had pierced itself through the rubber inside the tire some kind of way, closed itself enough that it did not go flat on me. Now, I want you to understand something. I don't know if you've ever driven from New York to Florida, but the route that I took, I'm going through the mountains. I'm, I'm traveling. <laughs> yeah, they led me through the mountains and about and... I'm driving 75 and 80 miles an hour. And I'm blessing God and going out. When I saw that knife that was in my tire, and I thought about the curves and the speed that I was going, all I could say was to God be the glory. All I could say was, Father, I thank you I thank you for protecting your child, for keeping your daughter. I was never alone. You are never alone. Even if I had had another human being in the vehicle with me, we would have had to look to the Lord I'll help her. I'll comfort her. Listen, God bless you. Thank you for, oh my God, I'm so excited about the, the subscribers. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Listen, you just simply go to youtube.com forward slash Esther, E-S-T-H-E-R, P-I-N-K-S-T-O-N, and hit the subscribe button or just look down at the bottom of the video. You'll see a little picture of me. Just hit it. Subscribe. Share this with somebody. There may be somebody you know that need to hear the testimony or need to hear the prayer or just need to know that God is real in this pandemic, in this time of crisis, in this time of prejudice. God is real. He has not left us. God is a God of variety. He made us the way he made us. It is no mistake that there are black people, white people, tall people, short people. It is no mistake. God made us this way. There's a little saying that I have to say. A rose is a rose is a rose. I love it. When you go in the store next time and you buy roses, take time and look at them. Say, wow, there's a yellow rose, a pink rose, a red rose, there's a white rose. This rose is, I don't even know the color of. But guess what? They're all roses. We are all made in God's creation. He loves us all. 
And if we have accepted him as our Lord and Savior, and if we have in, invited the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, to come in to live in us, then he dwells in us. Amen. Hallelujah. I know you love him today. I know you love him today. Listen, I know God has changed somebody's story. I know you could have been somewhere else. I know myself, I could have been dead. I could have been on alcohol, drugs. Oh, I could have been somewhere, no place to sleep. I just could have been, but God changed my story. I believe God is changing your story and I believe God wants to change your story. Would you pray with me? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, if there's anyone under the sound of my voice that do not know you, pray this prayer for you right now. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. C come in and change my story. The devil meant it for bad, but God turn it around for good. Every experience I might have had in my life from birth to now, use it for your glory. Change my story. I accept you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. And then I, I invite the Holy Spirit. Come in and make your abode in me. Live in me. Lead me and guide me. Comfort me. In the darkness, in the midnight hour, when I feel alone, I feel depressed. Comfort me, Holy Ghost. Bring your peace into my home, into my life, into my mind. Heal the, anyone that is sick near me and about me. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. Raise them up, oh God. Let your will be done. That you will get the glory. And God, for the ones that are not healed, Lord, I pray that they knew you. And I pray, Lord God, that they will go and spend eternity with you. I pray, Lord God, that the family will be comforted in the mighty name of Jesus. That you will, you will comfort them through this testing time. God, I know what it's like. I've lost loved ones, God. But God, only you were able to bring the comfort to me. And I know if you can do it for me, you'll do it for the others. You're no respecter of person. Listen, I love you. God bless you. We will see you next time. Don't you forget, subscribe, like, and share. We love you. God bless you.